Morning everyone, Dr. Eric, your fitness physician here. Um, finally got my uh, my Primax scrubs, I'm happy about that. I got the t-shirt, so, but I finally got the scrubs. So it's nice also to get outside again, the beautiful weather finally. The rain has let up, hopefully it's uh, dry where you are and uh, thoughts and prayers go out to those around who have been uh, devastated by the floods. So I'm um, gonna do a couple quick short videos again, um, touch on a few different things. And uh, today I'm just going to do uh, a kind of a recap of some things I've talked about before with a few fresh uh, fresh pointers and tips uh, put in there. So as you know, I, I would like to talk about the mental game, nutrition, fitness, and of course hormones and peptides. So today is going to be part one of an intro about uh, testosterone for men. Of course, testosterone is everywhere. A lot of people talk about it, but once again, it's important as with anything to make sure you're getting good information from someone who uh, knows, the, knows the literature. Um, I'm not saying, I, you know, certainly there's always something to be learned. Um, I'm still learning, uh, but certainly there's a lot of uh, gurus out there who are non-medical people giving advice, and I read some of their tips and things, and it, 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 I shake and shiver because uh, you got to know the medical literature, and, you, and quite frankly, you got to be, a, you know, it's best if you're a physician, you know, understand the biochemistry, you've been there, done that, and in the trenches, seeing the real life effects of, of these changes on the body, these medications and drugs and hormones and different things like that. So. Um, make sure you got someone who, you know, like myself, has studied this material, been certified, taken the education, done the training, ongoing training, and really understands it. So, uh, testosterone, as we all know, it's a it's a very important and powerful hormone for both men and women. Um, secreted by um, our the gonads, the testes, the ovaries, also some in the adrenal glands as well. Um, a lot of guys are aware of it because they think it, because of it's been uh, used and abused, unfortunately, through the years to help with increased muscle mass and strength and endurance. But when used properly, it can definitely do this in smaller amounts. Uh, what, what I, where I find it most effective is with um, with uh, basically my target population. I'm you know I've worked uh, with everyone, but certainly the uh, over 40 crowd, men and women, they're trying to get back in shape, to lose weight, get get their health and fitness back. Uh, those guys and and women that are uh, you know. Uh, going, going down that slippery slope where they could uh, be sick. They're, they're pushing the envelope in terms of developing metabolic syndrome, pre-diabetic or insulin resistant. They're, they're a little bit overweight. As we know, obesity is very inflammatory and, and has very negative health consequences. So it can really help uh, on top of a proper nutrition and fitness program to help them shed those pounds. It can definitely help burn off some fat, both the sub-Q fat and the dangerous visceral fat. Help put on a little bit of muscle, which of course is very metabolically active. I'll talk later in some other videos about uh, the muscle and how much I, you know, I love the muscle because it's it's uh, the most important endocrine organ, organ in the body. As we're finding out, there's a lot of things that it does in terms of secreting myokines and other things that influence the body in many, many ways. So, uh, in addition to that, testosterone enhances uh, overall well-being and mood. It can definitely help with memory, motivation, uh, libido, uh, sexual performance, erectile dysfunction. I treat a lot of sexual dysfunction and men and women in my sexual sexual medicine clinic uh, as well. Um, so, you know, we do a lot of treatments with PRP and other modalities, and of course, hormones play a big part in that. Uh, women and, and men uh, definitely can help with skin tone, with collagen formation, and as well as bone density. Osteoporosis is a huge problem that gets overshadowed by all the cancers and other things out there, and unfortunately, it's, it's a big, big problem. You know, those who suffer hip fractures, I mean, you know, up to 40, 50 percent of them are, are stuck in a nursing home or inability to ambulate and even die within the first couple of years, and the mortality actually over overshadows breast cancer and prostate cancer combined. Um, so very important to boost that and maintain uh, strong bones. Um, testosterone is also important for your lipids. You can protect against cardiovascular disease, uh, hypertension, degenerative joint joints as we talked about, and again, metabolic syndrome. It, by helping improve insulin sensitivity, improve your lipid panel, uh, of course, this can in turn help uh, turn back uh, all those other things that we just talked about in terms of uh, overall health. So. Uh, it can help with the prevention of deterioration of the joints, ligaments, skin, and bones. And as I mentioned, protects the cardiovascular, neurologic, vascular, and immune systems. Uh, there's uh, been some studies shown that um, prevention of uh, Alzheimer's dementia is similar to estrogen, and more likely that's because of its estrogen effect. In other words, a lot of the testosterone, not a lot, but some of the testosterone gets aromatized or converted into estrogen. It's been demonized in the past. A lot of guys think, oh my God, you got to have low estrogen, but it's actually we're finding out that estrogen is very important in men. It's actually better to have moderate to high levels than to have low levels. Those studies who have actually combined, have actually dropped men's estrogen, have worse health outcomes. They have more sexual dysfunction, more fat, uh, thinner bones. So, you know, it is a whole nother topic for a whole nother conversation, but um, listen to a lot of lectures, uh, you know, uh, by my one of my mentors, Neil Rousier, as well as myself, uh, but it's important to have uh, higher uh, estrogen levels, or at least moderate range. You don't want them low or, or single digit, that's for sure. That would be, that uh, has a very negative health consequences. So, again, because of these effects from the testosterone as well as the estrogen, again, pre prevention mentally 
um, anti has uh, can show some antidepressant effects, and of course there's a lot of anti-inflammatory effects in, in terms of lowering some anti uh, uh, anti-inflammatory cytokines and boosting the the uh, and, and lowering the pro-inflammatory cytokines, which has widespread effects throughout the body on metabolism, cell health, and more. Um, some studies have also shown some decreased uh, inter intermediate thickness in the carotid arteries, which of course is a harbinger of, of, of uh, vascular problems, strokes, and uh, can indicate uh, plaques and other things elsewhere throughout the body. Across the board, lowers mortality. You know, those who have uh, higher testosterone levels, uh, quite frankly, they live longer. Similar with women, higher estrogen levels, they tend to just live longer. Um, so, as we find out with men, unfortunately, most of the deficiencies are secondary, not primary. What I mean by that is that, um, you know, primaries where basically the testicles stop producing testosterone. There's various reasons for that. Secondary can be related because your, your brain is not stimulating your gonads to produce the testosterone. A million reasons for that, and I'll get into that later, but unfortunately, we're plagued with a lot of toxins in our environment, whether it's environmental, dietary toxins, stress, lack of sleep, poor nutrition. Um, many other things. Uh, it can be simply part of the aging process, but I think nowadays we're bombarded with many more things that can affect us adversely, not just our testosterone, but other hormone levels and other things in our cellular health. I'm going to talk in other videos about cellular health and how important that is. Um, so what we have to do is address that. We try to, of course, fix the underlying factors first. Sometimes we can correct this without even doing anything in terms of hormone administration. Um, we want to rule out anything else in terms of any of the metabolic problems, pituitary adenomas, other problems that could be causing this. And then it's a question if, if, if all those things are done, it's still uh, very symptomatic, levels are very low, then we have to correct that. And we can correct that indirectly with such modalities as ACG and Clomid, or we go right to testosterone replacement therapy. Um, and of course, we want to uh, use bioidentical testosterone, not the synthetic forms. And once again, do not block the estrogens. There's no need for aromatase inhibitors like Arimidex to block the conversion into estrogen. Um, there's just no need for that. If you dose it properly, if you know what you're doing, if, you, if you've been trained and you understand it, I've never had to do that, and every now and then you have to occasionally get someone, and I have one patient who occasionally has to do a very low dose just for a few weeks uh, because of gynecomastia, true gynecomastia, um, uh, which is actually nostalgia, not really gynecomastia. Let's, let's reframe that, but again, whole other topic. But in general, 99.9% .9 of the time, you don't have to give it, and you should not give it. Studies that were, where that has been given negative effects. So administration of testosterone, again, topical creams and gels, there's pellets, and then there's injectables. We want to get the levels uh, to the to upper middle to upper uh, uh, quartile range. You know, it can be anywhere from the, the normal total range is anywhere from uh, 300 to 1,000. Of course, we shoot for the, uh, the upper half uh, to the upper uh, three fourths, three you know quartile, 7, 800 somewhere in that range. But again, I go by the symptoms. If my guys are feeling great and they're, all their other panels are good and they're 400, 500 testosterone level, I'm good with that. Uh, some guys, because of the receptor sensitivity, however, need a higher level. It's not so much the level, it's the receptor. And again, uh, we can talk about that in future videos, but uh, again, that's why I go by the symptoms. You know, the, the levels are not indicative of, of what's going on inside the cell. Uh, same with women, we want uh, upper levels. Uh, same thing, and then again, I gauge that by the results. So again, the goal, goal is the, the upper end of normal uh, for young adult. And of course, I monitor uh, yearly and, month, and monthly. The other thing to be aware of is uh, DHT. Uh, some testosterone gets converted into DHT. It's about 10 to 15 percent, so uh, levels can be, you know, normally around 50 to 100. If you're on testosterone, anywhere from 100 to 500. Uh, it actually has a lot of positive effects on libido and energy. Uh, studies actually have not shown a true effect on the prostate. And a lot of people talk, and there's been a lot of talk about how DHT can cause prostate issues and hair loss and things of this nature. Only a 1 percent increase in hair loss, and it really has to do with the saturation model. Um, and the same thing with the prostate. Again, topic for another day, but uh, basically, you know, if you're genetically predisposed to hair loss, anything you do to bump up your testosterone DHT, you might have a slight increase, uh, but that has to do more with genetics than actual testosterone causing it. Same with the prostate, it actually has no, not much effects. The transdermal uh, effect especially can cause more DHT conversion, but again, we've shown studies where actually the DHT is a much more potent form of the testosterone, which again, can have massively positive effects on libido, sexual uh, uh, performance, um, as well as uh, libido or, and energy levels too. So with all my patients, I advise them with testosterone. Of course, we have to worry about there's a the possibility of testicular atrophy unless we put them on concurrent HCG therapy. Um, they more than likely will be infertile. We have to worry about transference to others, uh, erythrocytosis, um, and other, uh, go over all the, the, the contraindications for it or other risks and things to look out for. But again, the indications for using it are broad. And again, anyone with signs or symptoms of testosterone uh, deficiency, andropause, or even with men, women, uh, menopause, you know, libido issues, sexual dysfunction, 
Um, all the things I mentioned earlier, if they're overweight, have abnormal lipids, uh, decreased motivation and drive, um, having problems uh, putting on weight and decreased exercise uh, tolerance. And basically anyone who wants to improve their quality of life, lower morbidity and mortality, increase longevity, and quite frankly, live better. Um, once again, very, very safe. Dozens and studies of studies have showed the safety of, and of testosterone and the massive health benefits. So it's not just to look good, feel good, perform better. It's actually to live longer, health, live healthier, uh, improve your body, reduce all the risk patches for disease, and feel better. Um, it's not associated with increased risk of prostate, prostate cancer or any other cancer. Uh, lower levels of testosterone have actually been indicated have been, uh, associated with things like heart disease and a higher Gleason score of prostate cancers and an increased incidence of prostate cancer. Again, it goes back to the sat saturation model.